scientists studying solar terrestrial physics can now get a double dose of the sun through an innovative space-based mission called STEREO. STEREO, the Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory, is a NASA space science mission designed to obtain never-before-seen three-dimensional pictures of coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, from the sun. CMEs are the largest known explosions in our solar system and seriously impact electronic systems here on Earth, as well as astronauts and satellites in space. NASA scientists are very interested to learn much more about how the sun affects our modern society and our exploration of the solar system beyond our planet. They are using new and innovative technologies in missions like STEREO to expand their knowledge of solar terrestrial physics and how the sun interacts with the rest of the solar system. The STEREO mission includes two nearly identical observatories designed, built, and operated by APL, the Applied Physics Laboratory, part of Johns Hopkins University. NASA Goddard Space Flight Center manages the twin observatory mission. Why two spacecraft? Let's use our eyes as an example. Hold up a small object at arm's length. Look at it while alternately opening and closing each eye. It seems to jump from left to right, right? The twin stereo observatories take pictures of CMEs in this way, with the observatories positioned at offset angles much like your eyes. The images are combined to create three-dimensional or 3D images of the sun. Coupled with data from ground-based and low Earth orbiting observatories, Stereo's data allow the science team, led by NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, to observe in 3D the buildup and liftoff of magnetic fields from the Sun and the path of Earthbound CME. The twin stereo observatories fly in orbits about the Sun in front of and behind the orbit of the Earth. To get both spacecraft into these critical and challenging leading and trailing orbits, mission designers have improved upon a lunar gravity assist designed for a single spacecraft. It has long been known that the gravitational pull from a planetary body can influence the shape, size, and tilt of a spacecraft's trajectory. Stereo mission designers determined that the most efficient and cost-effective way to get the twin observatories into space was to launch them aboard a single rocket and use lunar swingbys to place them into their respective orbits. This is the first time lunar swingbys have been used to place more than one spacecraft into different orbits, something that cannot be done by the launch vehicle alone. Before launch, the Stereo spacecraft undergo a series of in-depth and critical tests in the clean rooms at APL and NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. Thermal vacuum, vibration, and acoustic testing place the spacecraft systems and subsystems in similar conditions confronted in the harsh space environment. Violent launch vibrations and extreme levels of solar radiation are replicated to assure they can withstand the rigors of space throughout the life of the mission. Each step of spacecraft development has its own testing phase. Even the smallest components are tested separately before being integrated onto the observatories to make certain everything will work right. Once fully assembled, the observatories are tested to make sure all the individual parts work together. These tests shake out problems that would not be repairable once the observatories are in space. A 
As the twin observatories are integrated onto the Delta II launch vehicle's third stage at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida, a team of mission operators at APL in Maryland remotely monitor the health of each spacecraft. Once stacked and shrouded inside the fairing of the launch vehicle, the observatory switched to internal computer control just prior to launch. Three, two, one, engine start, liftoff. After launch, the observatories fly in an orbit from a point close to Earth to one that extends just beyond the moon. About two months after launch, mission operators at APL synchronize spacecraft orbits, directing one observatory into its Earth-trailing orbit. One month later, the second observatory is redirected to its position ahead of Earth in its orbit around the Sun. Like a remote laboratory, each observatory houses two instruments and two instrument suites for a total of 16 instruments per spacecraft. The scientific instruments come from institutions around the world. Each instrument is designed to observe a piece of our nearest star, the Sun. The stereo mission begins a new frontier of solar exploration, visualizing the Sun in ways never before seen and allowing NASA and solar scientists to get a double dose of the Sun.